Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bowling Shoe Handsome. Yes! From yes! From yes! Oh. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bowling yes! Shoe yes! Handsome. Yes! Bowling Shoe. Yes! Bowling Shoe Handsome for Monday, April. Yes! Yes! Come on, what is it? Hello, everybody, and welcome yes! to. Yes! Hello, everybody, and yes! welcome to Bowling. Ugh, forget it. Playtime's over because tonight somebody's gonna get their ass whooped tonight in here. Why do I run and why do I hide when I see I come in further on down the line? Why do I sing and why do I rap? These songs I know I'll try to be stuck some mine, but the springs of life is I just wait. Hello everybody and welcome to Bowling Shoe Handsome for Monday, April 9th, 2012. I'm your host, Kevin McElvaney, and we're here. Big week last week for professional wrestling. We're here with the fallout from uh, last Monday and a couple of major debuts. Debuts. Do you like that? Uh, I have to rethink whether I want to continue to say the word debut like that. Uh, major debuts last week's Monday Night Raw. Of course, the A Train coming back to WWE, and almost as importantly, the Brock Lesnar coming back. Uh, we're going to talk all about that. We're going to talk tonight about Daniel Bryan and his upward mobility, or perhaps lack thereof, right now in WWE. A lot to talk about here tonight, but as always, we're not going to get right to it without playing some songs first. So here we go.
That was a twofer of songs by mid-90s Westchester, Pennsylvania pop punk bands. The last one you heard there was uh, was Popular Girl by the band Third Year Freshman. And before that, also from Westchester, Pennsylvania, Plow United with the song Spindle. Spindle and all of the other songs from Plow United's three full-length albums were released late last year as part well not late last year more mid last year as part of the retrospective album they put out on paper and plastic records you can purchase that on cd or digitally and that's not a paid plug or anything like that we just uh want to show a little bit of love and put the plugs out there for the bands that are allowing me to use the music here on the show so again if you enjoy the music go support the bands give them your money and glad to have the music included of those two fine Westchester bands there. Westchester, Pennsylvania, once again, not Westchester, New York. Sorry, Westchester, New York, no offense, you didn't give us Plow United and you didn't give us Third Year Freshmen, so you're dead to me. Well, no, you're not dead to me, but uh, not, not relevant to this here conversation. I'm rambling off a little bit, still a little bit flustered by the yes guy shouting earlier in the show. We will be talking about the word yes, and the word yes repeated three times, a lot more, a little bit later in the show, but first, and hopefully you know what that yes is. Hopefully you know what that symbolizes. If you've been watching WWE program programming lately, you do know. And if you haven't been watching WWE programming lately, we will expe- explain that to you in detail later on during the show. And if you haven't been watching WWE programming, you've also missed out on a couple of big returns to the company. One was purported to be a debut, and that was of Lord Tensai. Lord Tensai, formerly known as Albert or the A-Train, debut, debut. Okay, the other return was, of course, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, back in WWE in some capacity or another, reportedly has a one-year contract, if the internet is to be believed, and of course the internet has never lied to us about anything, so why would it start now? Brock Lesnar back in WWE after a lengthy lengthy departure from the company, a lengthy absence, beginning back in 2004 after a craptacular match at WrestleMania 20. It was either just incidentally the worst match ever, or it was an art of wonderful, wonderful trolling by Brock Lesnar and Goldberg. This match, ladies and gentlemen, was so difficult to sit through and watch in person, and I, and I was there for that event. At WrestleMania 20, this match was so awkward. You, if you watch this at home, you didn't get the full picture of how awkward this was to watch in person without even the least bit of babbling by the announcers underneath to make it a little bit more palatable. It was just so slow, and I really think it was a spiteful act by Lesnar and Goldberg, who were both leaving WWE under uh, under less than good pretenses, I guess we should say. Uh, not a good departure for Brock Lesnar. He, he had had it with WWE, with professional wrestling in general. Reportedly hated the schedule and wanted to branch out and try some other things. He first tried, if, if you recall, to, uh, to enter the NFL. Went to tryout camp for the Minnesota Vikings. Did not make the cut. Did not make the full-time roster for any NFL team. And gave up on his goal of being a professional football player pretty quickly. Then he began training for MMA, which wound up being the best thing he could have possibly done. I had my doubts when I first heard about it. Certainly, I thought that Brock Lesnar would fare well as a competitor in UFC because he was tough enough to do it, but I just didn't know how the crowd was going to respond to him. And in fact, there was a mixed reaction. There were a lot of MMA fans, and there are still a lot of MMA fans who are just not into professional wrestling. They prefer prefer everything to be real, damn it, no matter how boring that real might be. And, uh, and I'm, I apologize to any MMA fans out there, but, you know, if I wanted to watch grass grow, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. If I, if I wanted to do something, watch something akin to MMA that would give me that level of excitement, I think I'd just go out and watch grass grow. I think that's where I was going with that. MMA is about as exciting as my ramblings here on this show, and it's just not a big thing for me. I have a lot of respect for the athletes. They're very talented, good, great at what they do. I certainly could never do it. I couldn't win the crappiest of bar fights. But at any rate, Brock Lesnar proved to be great at MMA. And he was given a very, very quick title shot, the UFC championship. Won the UFC championship, 
reigned undefeated for a while, dropped the title, had some medical issues somewhere in there, he had diverticulitis, I believe, and retired. Retired from MMA. He is reportedly done with MMA forever, and he had said this before. He, he stood by this. Doesn't mean he's not going to do anything else to make money, and in fact, WWE seems to be a pretty good option. His UFC contract has expired, and here he is reportedly with another one-year deal for WWE. So, interesting to see him back. I'm not sure if it's a great thing, though, because if you think about this, Brock Lesnar left before because he didn't really care about professional wrestling. So my question to you this week, how devoted could Brock Lesnar actually be to WWE at this point? Is he really going to do what's in the best interest of the company? Is he there to be fair and do business, being that he has been in the locker room before, being that he is most likely being very well compensated for what he's doing? I don't know. I guess it remains to be seen. All we know is that he came out last week on Raw and he attacked John Cena, laid him out at the end of the show. So John Cena not faring well against these returning WWE superstars as of late. Of course, with the loss to The Rock at WrestleMania and now Brock Lesnar laying him out on Raw. What's Brock Lesnar going to do next? Well, I guess try to bulldoze over John Cena. Will he be able to do that? And when will we see the match? I don't know. And my guess would be SummerSlam. I don't think they're going to stretch this out until WrestleMania. Brock Lesnar, if he is under contract... He's not like The Rock where he's out shooting movies. I think we're going to be seeing him on TV more. And to be honest, I'm not sure if if this is a good uh, thing for WWE for reasons other than what I just mentioned, for reasons other than the fact that he might not be totally devoted to this. Brock Lesnar is sort of a holdover from the age of giants. The age of, even though Brock Lesnar himself is very athletically capable, he is a holdover from the era when WWE main eventers were all six foot five and 350 pounds. When you had your Dave Batistas and you had your Brock Lesnar's and you had guys like the A-Train being pushed very hard, uh, guys like Nathan Jones being pushed very hard. Some of these guys did better than others, as we now know. But you had WWE very highly focused on these big jacked guys being at the top of the card. Honestly, it, it bored me then, it bores me now. You see guys like CM Punk, like Daniel Bryan, even though I'm not a big fan of uh, Dolph Ziggler's, like Dolph Ziggler, like Cody Rhodes, like Kofi Kingston, like The Miz, like R-Truth, you see these guys who are certainly bigger than the average person, certainly more jacked than the average person. To me, they even though they're not huge compared to the wrestlers of years past, they're a whole lot more entertaining than, you know, the the big, big giant guys who are able to just crush anything in their path. You know, there's this level of, of I don't want to say sophistication, but subtlety to them. And, and CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, these are two guys specifically who were never able to get by on their size. They had to become inventive. They had to forge interesting, uh, interesting characters. They had to become very good at speaking to the crowd, at wrestling in creative and different ways. They made the wrestling business a lot more interesting to watch when they were coming up through ROH and through the independent federations. And I don't want to see these guys shortchanged because you have someone like Brock Lesnar coming back for a short period of time, maybe or maybe not with his heart in the damn thing. And some focus is going to be taken away from these young and deserving guys who bring something different to the table. I'm all for Brock Lesnar being there in some ways because he's going to bring a lot of focus and a lot of mainstream attention to WWE, but I am a little bit pensive about this. So hopefully there's some memorable programs that come out of this. I think certainly, not to be too negative, I, I, I think certainly he's going to be very interesting to watch at first. I My eyes are glued to the TV. I have no doubt that it's going to increase the ratings in the short term. I just hope that this is done right and... WWE does right by the guys who have been working so hard to fill in the gaps left by guys like Brock Lesnar, left by guys like Batista, left by even guys by the, like The Rock. You know, a lot of people will just take their ball and, and go home, and then they decide they come back when they want to come back. And we see that immediately it's, it's like their, their space was saved in line, and they can just go back to wherever they want to be. You know, even a guy like Chris Jericho – 
who is more in the vein of of a CM Punk or a Daniel Bryan in that he had to work his ass off to get everything. He was never given anything because of his size or because of who he is. Even a guy like him is just, he can decide when he wants to come and when he wants to go. And it's to me, it's a little bit insulting to some of the guys underneath the, uh, the line cutters. So with that said, I think I've whined enough about this. Definitely want to be talking a little bit more about the Daniel Bryan situation, specifically the catchphrase that you're going to be hearing a lot more of in coming weeks and coming months. But first, we've got some more music. So let's start this off with the band Please and Thank Yous. And the song is called Peas and Cheese on Bowling Shoe Handsome. Yeah, I'm 
That was the band Sweet Baby Jesus with the song Certified American. That was from the split with Brent's TV. That's available. I believe that's still available on CD from interpunk.com. I know it's available on iTunes. So before that, we had the band Hold Tight and the song Call the Zoo, which is the title track from their album Call the Zoo. Long, epic rock album from that band. That's available on their band camp at holdtight.bandcamp.com. And we're back with more Bowling Shoe Handsome. And what we need to talk about here this week is Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan has been a subject of conversation on this show since, really, since its inception. And for good reason. He's always doing something that's interesting and worth talking about. Of course, right now, he looks to be headed into even bigger territory. He's no longer the World Heavyweight Champion. Lost his title in 18 seconds. An 18-second match with Sheamus. And we talked about that plenty on the show last week here with our guest. But, despite that, Daniel Bryan Fever is running wild. And it remains to be seen if he's going to be as uh, over, to use the, use the inside term, which I don't like to do here too much, over with the crowd, whether he's going to get the kind of reactions that he's been getting. At WrestleMania, the crowd went crazy for him. The crowd was chanting his name well into the second match, long after he was out of the sight of the camera. They were chanting from the next night the entire night on Raw. They were doing his, his yes chant, the yes, yes, yes repeatedly throughout the show. They were chanting it at The Rock. They were chanting it during matches. They were chanting it uh, when there were repeated repeated uh, strikes by Lord Tensai during his match against Alex Riley. The chant did not stop. It would not die. Apparently, it was actually chanted at a Miami Heat game, which, granted, there's some crossover in fans there, but you have to wonder when this sort of chant's catching on like this. Chants in professional wrestling are, are a very big thing. Chants, slogans, catchphrases, they're huge. They're huge. If you think about The Rock and his popularity, you have his Smell The Rock Is Cooking catchphrase. which That's the nerdiest that catchphrase has ever sounded, by the way, when I just said that right there. In case you, in case you didn't know that. That's actually a world record I just set for n- nerdiest saying of a rock catchphrase. So you had that. Jabroni beaten, pie eaten, all that. You have things that the crowd would chant along with him. You had Stone Cold and Bottom Line and Hell Yeah and another catchphrase that's very appropriate here and we're going to talk about why in a few minutes. <laughs> but Stone Cold with his catchphrases. You have Ric Flair with his famous whoo and you have Hogan with his what you gonna do. You have The Miz is awesome even. You have just another example I'm thinking of actually. You have if you go back a few years into the era of Rock Austin you have DX with with Suck It and with Road Dog and all of his many catchphrases. These were catchphrases that were not just huge with WWE audiences. These were catchphrases that resonated with people who didn't even watch wrestling, who, who might not have even known where the catchphrase came from. Seriously, if you ask the average person if they know where Suck It came from, because it, it wasn't popularized until DX had really used it. And for better or for worse, they introduced that phrase into the, the American le- lexicon. But ask somebody if they know where it came from. If they're not a wrestling fan, odds are they're not going to know where it came from. Actually, some some might, because there was a lot more crossover back then. But you have these catchphrases that bleed over into the, the popular vocabulary. And this can only mean good things for WWE. If WWE can raise awareness of this yes catchphrase, if it could somehow be a thing, even if, if athletes are going to do it, if people are just going to do it in everyday life, chant yes over and over again in this this victorious, triumphant, and egotistical way, if that can become a thing, then it's only money for WWE. And money for WWE equals money for the guy who comes up with the catchphrase, the guy who popularizes the catchphrase, and yet yeah, bodes well for his career. It's going to make him more popular with the crowd, and it's going to make him a huge star. Daniel Bryan's already been doing really well even without this catchphrase, which, you think about it, it's one word repeated three times. Nine letters. Nine letters are making Daniel Bryan into something of a phenomenon. And you might say this is a fluke. It's possible that the yes chance could die down over the weeks. I'm not sure that's going to happen. I kind of see this taking off. Somebody asked Stone Cold Steve Austin on Twitter last week 
if he thinks yes is the new what? And he said, capital yes. And that he hopes it's the new what because he wants to get rid of what. Somehow it's a little bit less obnoxious because if you're chanting yes, at least you're, uh, my opinion, is that you're <laughs> at least agreeing with somebody instead of calling into question what they're saying. Nonetheless, it's, it's very therapeutic for the crowd to ch chant along with things. Crowds love to cheer, love to chant things along with the wrestlers. Love to buy t-shirts, it turns out. Uh, Daniel Bryan's t-shirt now up for pre-order. Just says yes on it three times. With exclamation points. Total of uh, 12 characters there. If you're counting, if you're keeping score at home. But it's already selling like hotcakes. It's huge. And I think, you know, I'm recording this on Saturday evening, a couple nights ahead of Monday Night Raw. I have no doubt you're going to see that t-shirt everywhere. And that you'll see it everywhere at the SmackDown tapings. You know, he's going to stay... A heel for the time being, I think. He, he's going to stay a bad guy, be a villain. I don't think he's going to be as effective with this arrogant and uh, selfish character if he is uh, a babyface or a good guy. There I go, using the insert, inside uh, terms again. But he can still be huge, and he can still be extremely popular. You know, And if you think about The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin, they were both bad guys at different points and very popular doing what they did so much so that they had to be good guys it's the same thing you saw with CM Punk and I think you look at things like what Daniel Bryan's doing with his character and what CM Punk was doing with his, his pipe bomb promos and these are things that cause the crowd to react that surprise them that sort of inject the fun back into pro wrestling and the fun has been sort of missing in action and that's been a problem you know it's turned off a lot of people. I, I'm really glad that we're not just seeing guys talking about how very angry they are at each other all the time anymore. It's kind of a bummer to watch when you see people go out there and just talk in this slow and dragging tone. I know it's, it sounds like I'm making someone fun of someone particular here, and I sort of am. I will kick you in the skull. It's, it's depressing to listen to. It really is, and I, I'm glad that some of this fun is being injected back into the product, that it could still be edgy and still be, it's really still pretty family appropriate for the most part. I mean, it has its moments, but I guess I just like that it's different and that it's changed a little bit. I think we're in a really exciting period for pro wrestling. Dare I say that I'm not that worried about Brock Lesnar coming back, about the A train coming back, about this era of giants beginning again. I'm a little worried about it. That's why I talked about it earlier. But I don't think it's going to be a problem in the long run. I think we are in a new era of WWE. I don't think we're going to see it beating NBA game playoff games in the ratings. But I think it's going to steadily increase in popularity. And I think we're going to see something of a new boom period in WWE within the next couple of years. You can, uh, you can mark my word on that. I'm pretty sure we're going to see this. It happens. It's cyclical. Wrestling blows up. And it dies down, and it blows up, and it dies down, and it blows up again. It's about overdue. And I think we're seeing some changes, and some very healthy changes that are making the product a lot more entertaining. And maybe it's wishful thinking here, but I think we've got some good things ahead. We'll be back with more Bowling Shoe Handsome after some more music. Captain, my captain, we live to seize the day we were drunk at sea and we met a wrong turn. Oh, captain, my captain, storms moving in, we die at sea, we have eternity. So fall me down tonight We sank with the ship We set sail Looking for Something we never find This is how we lived It's the only way to die Captain, my captain, lived to see the day we were drunk at sea. We met a wrong turn. No 
captain, my captain. Subs moving dead. Die and say. We have a Shin Splints, lol, with the song Set Sail. So, drawing near the end of another edition of Bowling Shoe Handsome. And again, there's a lot to talk about even still, but there's a, even more that's developing. And I'm very curious to see what happens on Raw and SmackDown this week, and of course we'll be here next week to report on that. I'd like to take this opportunity now to ask for some help, for some support. And this is not for me personally, it is for a musician whom I'm a fan of and who some people who listen to the show for the music might be fans of as well. And this musician is Sarah Kirsch, uh, who was in several bands, um, fronted the band Fuel, not, not Fuel, who, the radio band that does Shimmer and a bunch of other songs, but Berkeley, California, in California area punk band. I was also an original member of the band Pinhead Gunpowder, which is a side project of Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day. And Sarah Kirsch is, has been having some health difficulties, uh, specifically something known as Fanconi anemia, which is a genetic disorder that can lead to leukemia and other cancers. Uh, Sarah has undergone lot of medical, a uh, lot of medical procedures, including chemo, bone marrow transplant, still undergoing some treatment life savings has been depleted and it's been even with insurance it's been really expensive and there are still costs so if you are a fan of any of the bands i just talked about or just want to support a good person a great person and a great musician who has been important in my life and the life of a lot of other people just by virtue of making such amazing music and by all accounts an amazing person uh other apart from the music then i would ask that you go do that um, if you want to read about sarah you can go to www.wepay.com slash donations slash sarah there's also an article up on the maximum rock and roll website so with that said uh, if you could help with that that would be amazing and i thank you in advance all right so to recap tonight's show brock lesnar is back May or may not be the rebirth of the era of the Giants. May or may not be a problem. We shall see. But I'm a little bit pensive about Brock's return. Daniel Bryan, uh, he's shooting for the moon here, and he's going to land among the stars, to use the old cliche. Daniel Bryan's new shirt, yes, 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 is available at WWE.com. I want to make very clear here that there is no... I realize what that sounded like. I'm sorry. Yes! Yes! WWE.com. 
WWE shop. And this, that's not a paid plug. Not really even meant to be a plug. I just uh, I just thought it was interesting news that this phenomenon has become a t-shirt. And thanks for tuning in, folks. Leave comments to bowlingshoehandsome at gmail.com. Comment on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash well, user BHF, BSH podcasts, or of course over at the old thebradyhicks.com and leave us your feedback, comments, questions, concerns. Uh, recipes for soup are also appreciated. Not much of a, a cook, so it has to be pretty simple soup. Preferably Billy one where I can uh, just dump the broth in and I don't have to make the broth myself. And be sure to tune in next week. Thanks as always for your support. This has been Bowling Shoe Handsome. Have a good week. Playtime's over because tonight somebody's going to get their ass whooped tonight in here. Why do I run? Why do I hide when I see it coming further on down the line? Why do I sing? Why do I run? These songs I know I'll try to these thoughts of mine. But the springs of life, I just wait.